Hello, today I'm taking a good look at the Bone Crusher TS5. While we're trundling our way up into the battle here with my clan mate, we're gonna go ahead and talk a little bit about the stats. It's got a top speed of 26 kph and it can get there. Um, it's not particularly fast. The turn rate, however, is pretty slow, only 20 degree, 22 degrees per second. So you'll get to the fight. You're faster than a T95, but uh, you're not fast by any means. Now, the armor, frontally, is pretty good on this. The weak spots are the commander's cupola, which is about 200-ish millimeters effective, and the lower plate in front, which depending where you are aiming is anywhere between 200 and 230 millimeters effective. The upper plate, uh, first the whole upper superstructure is 260 millimeters or better effective thickness from the front. So what does that mean? That means set when you're top tier, you're going to bounce a lot. If somebody knows where to shoot you and is willing to shoot green in ammunition, they can chew you up, or if they have a really accurate gun, they can chew you up. Against higher tier opponents, not so much. See that Camp Panzer 50T? Just put one right for me, no problem. Now, on the other side of the coin, the firepower on this thing is pretty darn good. You have 2,500 DPM. So, me and my companion here make short work of this Camp Panzer 50T. The downside to this gun is the accuracy. It's only 0.44, and it will troll you. Big time. It's Russian heavy accuracy. Um, this battle, it's close enough range that I don't have too much of an issue with it. But in many of the battles I played, rounds were just going left and right and center. I had one battle where I fired 20 heat rounds against tier 10 tanks, and I only got one pen. Most of the rounds didn't even hit. It was a long range encounter, early bird, but it was just disgusting how bad the gun was at long range. So, why mention that? Well, it plays into the vision and camo values. This tank actually has okay camo. Um, I think it's 0.16 on the move and 0.27 stationary. So that's not bad. The problem is, you're, if you go at long enough range to use your camo value, you're gonna not land very many shots. So you've really got to take that choice. Now the positive side, as you saw right there, is if you're in close, even when moving full speed, your dispersion isn't that bad. And against heavy tanks and such, you can usually just beat them up. You see, that's even backing up, you know, shooting wherever I want, not a problem. I just eat this arrow alive. He doesn't have a chance, he can't get his gun down on me because of the little gun turrets there, and so I just work him over. Now, the uh, ammunition choices on this are your standard US 120 mm You got 248 pen with your standard round, 300 with a heat round for your premium round, and an HE round with 60 millimeters of pen, which does come in handy from time to time. Um, shell velocity isn't all that good. It's not terrible, but it's, you know, middle of the road. So, with uh, those stats out of the way, you can see how as I'm trundling along here, as long as I've got my platoon mate with me, we can support one another, and keep each other's flanks safe, our DPM just goes to town. I had no problem clearing through our sector of the fight. If you don't have support, though, it's really easy to get flanked, and you just don't have much chance once that happens. So, overall, as one of this style of the tank destroyer, the big heavily armored one, it's about what you would expect. It can bully one top tier, but when its armor doesn't work, it's not going to last long. It does have enough armor to bounce even tier 10 rounds, but only if the uh, tank that's shooting at you doesn't know where to shoot you. Um, 
so you're at the mercy of the layer scale. So overall, I'd say it's average, maybe a little slightly above. It's also got a really high threshold for acing. You can see this battle, 3700 damage, 1600 XP, and it's only a second class.